Have you ever felt like the day you're in is just never going to end, like it is the longest day? Welcome back to Sea Life TV. I'm Daryl Chesser. I appreciate you stopping by and giving us the time to talk to you. Today, we are going to be reading from and talking to you about a writing I did recently, and it's entitled The Longest Day. But before we get going, I want to tell you more about sealifeministries.org. You should see the uh, uh, address right here, uh, I believe, in that general area. SeaLifeMinistries.org. On there, we have uh, many, many resources, free resources, you know, links to our archives of the video, and also uh, an, uh, an audio archive that now is approaching 800 different sermons from 1975 on. And uh, we're, we're making great progress in getting those done. Those are available to you free. Log on to SeaLifeMinistries.org. Go to the media page and you'll see the audio archive. Choose a folder and then the sermon, and go, ping, turn your volume up, here you go. It's absolutely free. Bless you with it in the name of Jesus. Now, the longest day. In Isaiah chapter 35, verse 3 through 7, we read, Strengthen the weak hands and support the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. And your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame man shall leap as a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For in the wilderness waters shall break out, and streams in the desert the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals where each lay, there shall be grass and reeds and rushes. It's Isaiah 35, verses 3 through 7 from the MEV. A recurring theme regarding God and Jesus Christ is the opening of blind eyes, the deaf hearing, the lame walking, and the mute speaking. When you see passages like this, what we just read, it is probably pointing to the Christ, most likely all the time. The Messiah, Jesus, who was yet to come when this was written, prophetic of the Christ. Here is Jesus' opening sermon when he kind of began his earthly ministry. He went into the synagogue, and this is out of Luke chapter 4. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and when he had unrolled the scroll, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the good news, the gospel, the really, really, really good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He's not done yet. Let's go back and look at it. It says, Then he rolled up the scroll, and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all those who were in the synagogue were fixed on Jesus. And he began to say to them, Today, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Wow. Today, the scripture that Jesus read out of Isaiah about opening blind eyes and deaf ears and the lame to walk the blind, the see, the, uh, the, the leaping for joy in, the, in the, the acceptable time of the Lord. That day, in the hearing of those people in that little synagogue, it began. That was spoken by Jesus Christ 
2,000 years ago, that scripture we just read, that opening sermon out of Luke. It is still true. These scriptures are still fulfilled today in Christ Jesus by his broken body and spilled blood on the cross. Paul told us this himself when he penned these words in Corinthians. As workers together with God, we ask you not to receive the grace of God or the unearned favor and the freely given, freely flowing gifts of God in vain. Don't receive them in vain or with no effect is what it says. Let's go on. For he says, in an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Look, now is the accepted time. Look, now is the day of salvation. This was Paul writing in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. He's speaking of the prophetic word, the acceptable day of the year, the acceptable time, Isaiah. And then Jesus had repeated that in his own words and said, Today, today, me, Jesus Christ, sitting here talking to you today, I start that clock, the acceptable time, the acceptable day. Now is the day of your healing. Now is the day of your blind eyes being opened. Now is the day of your finances being supplied. Now is the day of hope. Now is the time of grace and joy. The barren woman, the barren ministry, the barren fruitful uh, relationship. Now is the time for springs to flow out of the desert. Now is the time for the barren to be made fruitful. Now is the acceptable time in Christ. If we are waiting till we're good enough or holy enough, that is called self-righteousness. The free gift of God given because he loves us has now become a purchase, no longer divine favor. If you believe God owes you or if you have to do something to receive it, it is an exchange or purchase. You are trying to buy God's favor and God's love. Can't happen. God will be a debtor to no man. Salvation and all of God's free-flowing favor through the work of Christ Jesus on the cross could never be purchased at any cost except for one cost. And that cost was the sacrifice of God's son, Jesus Christ, on the cross for the life of the whole world, for the sin of the whole world. He died for us. That was the only price. It was, a, it was without price. It was without, no, there is no other one, no one worthy to do it. You, you die for your own sins, you're just dead. You didn't pay for anything. You just got consequences, baby, boom. That's coming to all of us without Christ. Do you have a couple of divine, trice-holy creator gods lying around your, ho your house by any chance to pay for your own salvation and healing and supply? I'm guessing that you probably don't. I certainly don't. Our Father in heaven has met your need, whatever it is, from his own storehouse of supply, healing, provision, protection, peace, joy, wisdom, eternal life, by his son's finished work on the cross his death, and his resurrection. It is, all, it is already ours by faith in the work of Jesus Christ on that cross. We receive these things freely by believing that our Father God who promised us and is also completely able and faithful to do these things that we ask of him. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Sozo or Soteria or whatever it is you need saving from. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. These words help me. All of these words help me very much. I strengthen my weak hands and my feeble knees by reading the words of God's grace, his good news. 
these things encourage me and strengthen me and, and strengthen my feeble knees and, 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 and my weak hands through Jesus Christ and his complete, perfect, and finished work on that cross. I bless you and your families today with the grace and favor of God in the name of Jesus. Now is the day of salvation. As of today, the day of salvation is still bright after 2,000 years. That, my friends, is one very, very long day. <laughs>